Hello everyone, welcome back to this pharmacology difficult podcast and today we are going to start with a new topic. We have finished with general pharmacology highlighted points and uh, the revision. Now we are going to start with autonomic nervous system that is abbreviated as capital ANS. So what are the few important things you need to remember about the autonomic nervous system? It is basically involuntary in nature and uh, that is how the autonomically the activities are controlled in this system and the organs that are supplied by the ANS they do not undergo atrophy even if the there is a section of the autonomic nerve and uh, the main divisions of the ANS you need to remember are sympathetic parasympathetic and enteric nervous system now divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic the division is anatomical in origin uh, the sympathetic system fibers they arise from thoracic and lumbar spinal cord that is why they are known as thoracic lumbar outflow and the parasympathetic fibers they arise from the cranial and the sacral spinal cord and that is why it is known as craniosacral outflow now what are the cranial nerves that are involved three 7 9 and 10 cranial nerves are involved and the sacral uh, segments that are involved they are s234 okay they all these fibers they come out they form a synapse in the ganglion and then they supply the organ accordingly they can be post ganglionic fibers they can be pre ganglionic fibers so let's get to know about the about the sympathetic system in the sympathetic system the post ganglionic fibers they are equal or longer to the pre ganglionic fibers and in the parasympathetic system the pre ganglionic fibers they are very very long the principal or the main neurotransmitter is acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction and also at all the preganglionic fibers so at the capital nmj that is neuromuscular junction and at the preganglionic fibers the main neurotransmitter always remember it is acetylcholine what other points you need to keep in your mind in the parasympathetic system in the postganglionic fibers also the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine in the sympathetic system there are different neurotransmitters in the post ganglionic fibers they can be noradrenaline they can be dopamine especially in the renal and the mesenteric circulation in the sweat glands it is acetylcholine and also it, it is acetylcholine in the sympathetic cholinergic system while in the adrenal medulla the main neurotransmitter is adrenally so there are differences in the sympathetic and parasympathetic system parasympathetic system is totally cholinergic that is the main neurotransmitter at post and pre ganglionic fibers is acetylcholine that is very important so uh, once the impulse reaches the synapse then the neurotransmitter is released it can work on the postsynaptic membrane that is containing the postsynaptic receptors it can also show its effect on the presynaptic membrane or receptors the presynaptic receptors what is their function they can increase or decrease the release of the neurotransmitter from the own neuron they can be autoreceptors or they can be different kind they can be heteroreceptors also so presynaptic receptors can be of two types autoreceptors and heteroreceptors now autoreceptors which increase the neurotransmitter release are the nicotinic and the beta receptors and the autoreceptors which decrease the neurotransmitter release they are alpha 2 receptors and muscarinic receptors but we need to know the different actions of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system generally they are opposite but sometimes not also now uh, we have to get to know about the we will study the different systems in details and then we will compare their actions first of all 
coming over to the general and the main organs the sympathetic actions in the heart is stimulation while in parasympathetic action in the heart is depression in the sympathetic action in the lungs is bronchodilatation and parasympathetic action is bronchoconstriction in the git the sympathetic action is decreasing the motility the parasympathetic action is increasing the motility as far as the urine outflow is concerned it is decreased by sympathetic action it is increased by parasympathetic action in the pupil of the eye sympathetic drugs they cause medriasis parasympathetic drugs they cause meiosis and except the sweat all the secretions are generally decreased by sympathetic action while parasympathetic action generally increase all the secretions that is a general overview we are not commenting too much in details about it but let's come to the system first i'll talk about the parasympathetic nervous system i told you acetylcholine is a principal neurotransmitter it is a principal neurotransmitter at the post and the preganglionic fibers so the whole system is also known as cholinergic nervous system now how, what is the synthesis of acetylcholine it is synthesized from acetyl coenzyme a and choline and there are various steps acetyl coenzyme a and choline they are forming the acetylcholine this acetylcholine is stored in the synaptic vesicles the synaptic vesicles whenever the stimulus arises they move towards the presynaptic membrane and then via the exocytosis the neurotransmitter is released into the synapse from the vesicles and then it can act on the presynaptic receptors it can act on the postsynaptic receptors and the uptake is uh, by the uptake is also there of the choline and there are various blockers in the whole step the storage into the vesicles is blocked by the vesamecol the release can be stopped by the botulinum toxin then hemicholinium it affects the reuptake of the choline so just remember one thing uptake of the choline by the neurons is the rate limiting step in the synthesis of neurotransmitter okay so cholinergic receptors can be nicotinic they can be muscarinic nicotinic receptors can be ganglionic receptors like capital n small n and muscular neuromuscular junction receptors like capital n small m muscarinic receptors there are of five types m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 m1 are generally found in the central nervous system and the gastric ganglia in the stomach m2 is found in the heart and the cns m3 are found in many places like bladder bronchus lungs glands eye git etc m4 and m5 they are found in the central nervous system now what are the various functions of the cholinergic system i told i just gave an overview of that now we get to know in, in the heart the parasympathetic system has a kind of inhibitory effect on the m2 receptors and there is a resultant negative chronotropic that is decreased heart rate and decreased conduction negative dromotropic also effect bradycardia can occur and uh, decrease in the conduction occurs due to delay in the av node and bradycardia is the result of the decrease in the slope of the phase 4 of the action potential in the blood vessels always remember the blood vessels are not directly supplied by the cholinergic supply but m3 receptors cholinergic receptors are found on the endothelium of the blood vessels if there is stimulation of m3 receptors that will cause the release of nitric oxide that is no from the endothelium and that will cause vasodilatation this is one mechanism of vasodilatation another mechanism of vasodilatation is the action of the acetylcholine on the noradrenaline from where does the noradrenaline comes the vasoconstrictor nerve endings they release a the noradrenaline generally sometimes what happens the endothelium can be damaged so if the endothelium is damaged then m3 receptors are stimulated and then the receptors in the vascular smooth muscles they are also stimulated 
and this all leads to vasoconstriction. In the eye, the cholinergic system, this stimulates the sphincter pupillae, that is a circular muscle of the eye, and that may result in meiosis. And the receptors involved are the M3 receptors. Now, acetylcholine can also cause contraction of the ciliary muscles of the eye, and then that may lead to accommodation. Now, on the other hand, the entire cholinergic drugs, they can cause metriasis and loss of accommodation and that will lead to blurred vision. What is the effect on the glands in general? The cholinergic system, they stimulate the secretion of the glands and that can lead to increased salivation, lacrimation and sweating. And that the receptors that are involved, they are M3 receptors. Now you can imagine what will entire cholinergic drugs will do. They will cause dry mouth, dry eyes, difficulty in swallowing. What is the effect on the urinary bladder? The cholinergic drugs, they stimulate the detrusor and they also relax the trigon. And that leads to increased micturation. The receptors involved are M3 receptors. And entire cholinergic drugs may result in urinary retention. That is the opposite effect. What about in the gastrointestinal tract? The hydrochloric acid secretion, that is M1 and M3, it is stimulated by the parasympathetic system. And that leads to a kind of peptic ulcer disease progression. The peristalsis motion of the GIT is also increased. And the sphincters, they are relaxed. On the other hand, anticholinergic drugs can be used as spasmolytic agents for intestinal colic. What about the bronchus? The cholinergic drugs, they cause bronchoconstriction. The receptors involved are M3 receptors. And anticholinergic drugs, they cause bronchodilatation. Now what about due to vasodilatation, cholinergic system is also responsible for the erection of the male organ. That is also an additional effect. These are all the muscarinic actions. M1 to M3 receptors, they are involved. What about the nicotinic actions? Nicotinic actions, they are seen on autonomic ganglia and the neuromuscular junction. Now, both the autonomic ganglia of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, they are stimulated from the acetylcholine through the capital N, small n receptors. And the skeletal muscle contraction is also done by the stimulation by the acetylcholine. And that is the effect on the receptors on the neuromuscular junction, that is NM, NM receptors. Now, coming over to the drugs. What are the drugs that are involved in the parasympathetic drugs? Well, the drugs are the cholinergic drugs. They can be directly acting drugs. They can be indirectly acting drugs. Talking about the directly drugs, they are acetylcholine, pilocarpine, bethanicol, methacholine, carbacol. Indirectly acting drugs, they can be reversible. They can be irreversible. The reversible ones, they again can be divided into lipid and water soluble. The water soluble ones, they are the neostigmine, pyridostigmine, edrophonium. And the reversible ones, the lipid soluble ones, they are physostigmine, donepezil, tacrin, rivastigmine, galantamine, etc. In the irreversible section, again, they can be two types organophosphates and carbamates. Organophosphates are marathion, parathion, diazinon. Chlor, pyrifos, ecothiophate, nerve gases like tabunserin and soman, etc. Carbamates that are involved in irreversible drugs, they are carbaryl, propoxor, aldicarb, etc. The indirectly acting ones, they are the inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase enzyme. Now, what are the details of these drugs that I will be taking up in the next episode?